What's up, everybody? Welcome in. This is Hawk Talk on Melrose. I am Colin. Happy 4th of July as I am recording this a week before the 4th, but I will be releasing this episode on the 4th of July. So if you're listening to this on the 4th or shortly after, I'm wishing you a happy, safe, and fun holiday. There's nothing better than these two things, and that is America and Iowa football. So happy Independence Day from Hawk Talk on Melrose. So on this episode, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Typically, we talk Iowa football, we get into topics, all that jazz. We'll save that for a later date. We're going to have some fun today. I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite Iowa football home games. Now, you may have been to some of these games or all these games and completely disagree with me. This is all for fun. I am curious, though. So if you if you have, please go on YouTube and leave a comment of your list. Even if it's five of the games, leave a list of the top five. If it's 10, top 10, whatever. I'm very curious to see kind of what you guys think. And like I said, this is all for fun. So before we get into it, though, you can find Hawk Talk on Melrose on your favorite podcast apps, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, you name it, we're on it. Our preferred platform is YouTube. So make sure if you're watching us on YouTube, you subscribe to us, leave a review, like us. And uh, we really appreciate you guys doing that because it just helps build our brand and get our get our podcast out there to as many Hawkeye fans as possible. So thank you. If you're watching on YouTube, I do want to mention that some of the photos and videos you're about to see when I give you my top 10 list are actual photos and videos that I took. I like to keep a lot of that stuff stored in my iCloud. That way I can always look back at memories and stuff like that. And I thought this was a perfect episode to use some of those when I'm describing my top 10 list. So I just want to make that a point that a lot of the photos and videos you're about to see, not all of them, but but the majority of them are actual photos and videos that I took. So before we get into my list, I do want to clarify that I started going to games in 2008. So my list generates from 2008 until now, which is still 16 years worth of some really good games inside Kinnick. So I think the list is still going to be pretty damn good. But I just want to make that a point because prior to 2008, I only went to a handful and I was so young that I don't really remember them. So if you're thinking, well, what about this game in the early 2000s or that game in the late 90s or whatever? I wasn't at that game, so I can't really put that in my top 10, right? So I just want to make that a point. To get into my top 10, though, I do want to give you two games just outside of my top 10 that I think it's worth at least mentioning. And then I'm also going to give you one game outside of Kinnick that I've been to. So the first one is 2008 versus Wisconsin, aka the Sean Green game where we beat them 38-16. Sean Green had over 200 yards. Just a complete dominant performance by Sean Green. One of those games where you kind of forget how good Sean Green was. And it's one of those games where you kind of go back ever so often on YouTube and watch the highlights of that game. And you're like, wow, Sean Green was an absolute beast. And then the other game was 2016 versus Iowa State where we beat them 42 to three. Now that game, it's just like, it's one of those things where whenever you can beat an in-state rival or any rival, you know, whether it's Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa State, Wisconsin, but completely dominate them, it's really, really good feeling. And so that game being a night game, it was Matt Campbell's first year at Iowa State. They come into Kinnick. And it's just a complete ass kicking by us. And it was a fun game. I was a sophomore in college. So being a college student in Iowa City all weekend long, tailgating all day, going to that game, it was just a very fun memory. And um, it deserved to be at least close into the top 10 for me. And then the one game outside of Kinnick, and I haven't been to a lot. My That's my goal as I, as I grow older, is I want to visit every Big Ten school before it's all said and done. I've only been to three or, or how many have I been to? I think three I've been to outside of Kinnick. Uh, but the one game that I just will always live in my memory is 2017 versus Iowa State. That was the game where we won 44 to 41 in overtime. We were down by 10 with seven minutes left. Now, what was special about that game was we were tailgating the names. We weren't even going to be going to the game. We got tickets last minute and the tickets were on the first row more kind of towards the end zone. So the seats weren't very great and we paid an arm and a leg for them. But little did we know all the action was on our side of the field, like literally right in front of us. So you had the last play of the game in overtime. Amir Smith-Marset overtime touchdown catch was right by us. Uh, Matt Vandenberg diving touchdown catch was right by us. Akron Wadley's like 50 yard well, I guess that was a passing play, but he had like it was like almost like a, kind of like a run, a fifty yard run, but it was like a five yard out or something like that was on our side of the field. So, just all that action was happening right by us. And then at the end of the game, when they got the trophy, all the players came over to our area, so you know, shaking their hands because we were the first row, and uh, them singing the fight song, and then just us beating them 
even though we were down by 10 with like seven minutes left to come back and win that game. Just a very back and forth type game, a very fun game. You don't see that very often with Iowa going in like shootouts, 44 to 41. And so that game was just so much fun. And, and once again, being in Jack Trice and beating Iowa State in Jack Trice is, is really, really awesome. Let's get into my top 10 now. Number 10, 2009 versus Indiana when we beat them 42 to 24. So at this point in the season, we were 8-0. And Indiana comes to town. Indiana, not a very good team, right? Their program now has been better these last few years. This is when they were really bad, like against Indiana. And they come to town and they just, they made us look like dog shit that first two and a half quarters. We were down 21 to seven at half. And then middle of the third quarter, they're about ready to score. They're at like the two yard line. If they would have scored, they would have been up 28 to seven. Or if they would have had to kick a field goal, 24 to three. Seven, so that would have been a three score possession, no matter what. And that is when we had the famous Tyler Sash, where the ball is just bobbling all the way around and then just ends up in Tyler Sash's hands and he runs back for 98 yards to uh, score a touchdown. And that kind of flipped the light switch on for us. And, and then we really just kind of used that momentum. It was 21 to 14 at that point. I think they ended up kicking a field goal shortly after that. But then we went in the fourth quarter down 24 to 14 and we scored 28 unanswered points to end up winning 42 to 24 and to go 9 and 0 and and keep that undefeated streak going into unfortunately losing in the following week against Northwestern but that still was just an incredible game because you go from the lowest of the lows to the highest of the highs and you go from like wow we are literally going to lose Indiana to wow we just beat Indiana by 20 points like <laughs> like that in the fourth quarter so um incredible game incredible day Number nine, 2015 versus Minnesota, 40 to 35. Now, if you don't recall this day, this was the same day as the outdoor wrestling match inside Kinnick, which we went to, and that was awesome. And then, you know, you go back to the tailgate and then you go back to Kinnick for the night game, primetime game. We were wearing alternate uniforms that game, which at that point in the time, we didn't really wear alternate uniforms all that often. So it was kind of cool to see. We were undefeated. We were 10 and 0, Florida Rosedale, and at that point, like we were kind of struggling to beat Minnesota on a consistent basis. It was kind of going back and forth. And 2014, we actually lost them by a lot. So being able to beat Minnesota, beat your rival, get the Floyd Rosedale back, stay undefeated, nighttime game, um, coming off of a great day in general with the wrestling match and everything. It was pretty cool. It was pretty special. So I had to put that in my top 10. Uh, number eight, 2021 versus Indiana, beating them 34 to six. So what makes this game special for me is it was the first game back prior to COVID or after COVID, I should say. And, you know, during COVID, I think we can all agree that we didn't really know, like, are we ever going to return normal? Is, is, are we ever going to be able to pack a stadium, 70,000 fans? Like we really didn't know. I'm looking back on it. It's like, yeah, I mean, of course, but like at that time we, we didn't know. And so, when we finally were able to be like, yeah, we, we can, we, we are going to do that. We, we, you know, back normal a little bit. It, it just felt like a, like normalcy was back and which was, which was cool. And then also it was the first time back in Kinnick since 2019. So it's been two full years. And so just the buzz in the air, it was just a different feeling. If you're at that game, I think you will agree with me on that. It just felt different. But then not only that, the way we started that game and Iowa usually does not start games that fast. Usually it's, Sometimes we actually start pretty slow. And so to be able to come out first game of the season and within the first five minutes be up 14 to zero and Indiana, although they had a bad season that year, they started the year off in the top 20. I think they were what 18th in the country because they were coming off a really good season in 2020. And then they had Michael Penix Jr. who just led Washington to a national championship and is now in the NFL, taken in the top 10 in the NFL draft to the Falcons. We made him look like crap. He had two interceptions that were returned for touchdowns. So it was just a awesome game. Uh, we kicked ass 34 to six, and it was awesome. Number seven, 2009 versus Michigan, 30 to 28. So this is my second year now going to games, right? This is my first legit primetime game where both teams are good. You got Brett Musburger and Kirk Herbstreit on the call, ABC, night game. What more can you ask? And we go in and we're, we're undefeated at the time. And we went 30 to 28. Whenever you can beat Michigan, it's a great feeling. But when you have all those variables, it, it makes it even better. And so I have to put that in my top 10. 
Uh, number six, 2010 versus Michigan State when we beat them 37 to six. So this game was coming off in a, a heartbreaking loss the week prior. Michigan State undefeated at the time. They were number five in the country, led by Kirk Cousins. We make Kirk Cousins look like crap that day. We make Michigan State look like crap that day. And that was the famous Tyler Sash interception, pitch back to Micah Hyde for a touchdown. And where we sit at, we are on that side of the field. So the entire play was happening right in front of our eyes. And it was a very special moment and a great win at home, a dominant win at home in a fun, fun game. Uh, Number five, 2015 versus Pitt, 27 to 24. Now, yes, the game-winning field goal was awesome. It was like a 57-yarder to to win the game. Else, it would have went into overtime. You know, at that point, we were two and zero, so it's a three and zero. You know, that's that's awesome, right? It's a it's a nighttime game. That's cool. But the reason why I have this in my top five is because of beginning before the game started, Brett Greenwood and. Iowa honoring Brett Greenwood in the way they did. If you don't remember who Brett Greenwood was, or if you don't remember what happened, he was a safety for us back in like 2009, 2010. I don't know, shortly after, maybe 2012, maybe, I don't know, he was working out and he collapsed. And he pretty much had to kind of like start all over, like learn how to walk, learn how to talk again. It's just a very sad story. And so in 2015, Iowa honored him and he led the team out. And it was very, very emotional. And it was such a cool moment to see that, to see the team rally behind him. And, and like I said, he was like leading them in, leading them out of the tunnel. It was so cool, man. And yes, the rest of the game was awesome, but that moment, that moment was so cool. And so I have to put that not only in my top 10, but in my top five of uh, favorite games inside Kinnick. Number four, then 2016 versus Michigan. 14-13 14-13 to 13 win. Now, this was Jim Harbaugh's second year at Michigan, and they were undefeated. They were well on their way to the college football playoffs. We were coming off a very embarrassing loss to Penn State the week prior. Everybody counted us out, and it's just that classic nighttime game against a ranked team inside Kinnick. It's going to go bad for the other team, and it certainly did. Uh, you had the Jaleel Johnson safety, Akron Wadley having a great game, and then the game-winning field goal, being able to rush the field. And yeah, I mean, whenever you get a rush to feel like Kinnick, you, you have to put that up there in your, in your top, whatever, top five, top 10 games. And that game was, was really awesome. It kind of a, I wouldn't say it was a boring game, but you know, 14 to 13, not much action happened, not many touchdowns, things like that, but it was still an awesome game. Uh, number three. Now this one for some people might put that this at their number one, uh, but I have reasons why I have the number one and number two a slightly above this one, but 2021 versus Penn State, number three versus number four should have been a night game, but it was at least a three o'clock game on Fox, Joe Klatt, Gus Johnson on the call. It was just such a big game. We had so many big time recruits at that game and just how that game just turned out, right? You had the interception right away with Jesson Jacobs. Then it was kind of like, didn't look very good. Kind of looked like Penn State was controlling us. And then it kind of just switched. We had that three false starts because Kinnick was just absolutely rocking. And if you weren't there, TV doesn't do it justice. It was so loud. That entire game, it was so loud. It was one of the loudest games I've ever been to inside Kinnick and because we had the North End Zone. And I think at that point, that was what our like second year maybe with the North End Zone. So it really showed how impactful the new North End Zone was because of how tall and how close it is to the field. But yeah, it was just such a good game. And then you had... Brian Ferentz, one and only great call right after a TV timeout, the the play action rollout and then throw to the opposite side of the field. Nico Raganini wide open for the touchdown. It was, like I said, it was so loud and it was awesome. Beating them 23 to 20, another game rushing the field. Our, did we rush the field that game? I don't know if we rushed the field that game or not. I think we did actually. I don't know if I rushed the field that game, but I think we did. But yeah, incredible game. Number two. 2008 versus Penn State, 24 to 23. Now, this is my first ever game where I rushed the field. So I, this is why I put this slightly above Penn State of 2021. First ever legit upset inside Kinnick for me. I remember rushing the field. Once again, I'm 11 years old. I'm still very young. And I remember like my brother taking like some grass because this is when Kinnick Stadium still had grass and not turf. And then we had my cousin with me who's like six foot three. And he put me on his shoulders 
on the field. I remember like the sky cam going right past us and it was just such an awesome moment that I'll never forget. Now, I don't really remember how the entire game went. I just obviously remember the ending where, you know, the game winning field goal beating Penn State, who at that point, You know, it was a BCS era. So it was really like you have to be undefeated to make it to the national championship game. So so them losing to Iowa, it just pretty much counted them out. I remember going past Joe Paul in the concourse and you could just look the look of defeat on his face. It was awesome to see. And so um, that game was just incredible. So I put that in at at number two. And then number one, and I think a lot of people are going to have this at number one, 2017 versus Ohio State, 55 to 24. Not only did we beat Ohio State, but we absolutely destroyed them. Whenever you can beat Urban Meyer, it's it's a great day. And whenever you can kick his ass, it's an even better day. And that game, we had the alternate uniforms, which why we haven't worn them since, I don't know. But those alternate uniforms were so cool. And just from the very beginning, you had the pick six. You had an Iowa team that just did not look like Iowa. It was almost like we went in that game being like, okay, let's just completely drop what we do. Let's just make Ohio State be like, what is this? And that's literally what happened. Like, I think Ohio State was just like, what? Like, we did not prepare for this. This was not what we thought Iowa is. And we completely just were like, fuck it. Like, we have nothing to lose. Everybody's counting us out. We're we're not having that great of a season. Let's just completely abandon what we normally do and just do something completely different. And it worked. And it more than worked. And that was one of those games where like you knew towards the end, like like we won no matter. So like we were already down by the like the second row with a couple of minutes left because like we knew we were gonna rush the field and just being down there those last few minutes. I still have some videos on my phone. It was just so cool because we were right behind the Iowa's bench. They, you know, they're going crazy and wild and rushing the field for that game was was awesome too. So that was number one for me. Like I said, taking them to the woodshed, it was absolutely amazing and a game that I will never forget. So that is my top 10. So I'm curious to see if you guys agree with me on that. Have you been to some of these games? Like I said, leave a comment on YouTube and, and give me your list. I'm very curious to see what your list is. Like I said, this is something fun. You could obviously interchange a lot of these games out. You could put you know one at this and this at the other. I understand that. But all these games to me have like, there's something important about that game that I remember. And that's the reason why I ranked them the way I ranked them. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's just something fun on over the 4th of July holiday. So um, that will do it for this episode. We'll be back in a couple weeks. Big 10 preview will be our next episode. And then by then, man, we are getting very, very close to fall camp, Big 10 media days. And before too long, we will be back doing episodes weekly and then twice a week once the season actually starts. So Have a safe and happy rest of the 4th of July weekend, and we will talk soon, and go Hawks.